ESP32C2 is one of the cheapest microcontrollers with Wi-Fi connection capability that I could find in the market. And in this video, I am testing it with ESP node, the development board that I have designed before. With DCA 6416A 16-bit pin expander to interface two digits seven segment display that I have built on my own, which uses LED diffuser to hide my ugly soldering. We are going to play with segments today, so without any further ado, let's jump on in. Turn your dream project into reality with PCBWay. I've personally used their services to produce my own prototype for future IoT projects. Ordering your own PCB has never been easier before with a lot of features. They also have open source community, so there are many projects to have a look at. Link is in the description. All right, so here's my setup. Um, uh, here I'm using ESP node board that I've designed before. I actually, I've shared the production process of this board with you guys. Uh, so today I'm using it in one of my projects. So the ESP node board has ESP32C2 MCU. Uh, one of the low-cost uh, MCUs that Espressif um, offers. And I have my board connected over I2C uh, to a pin expander, the one that I have here. It's actually under this uh, LED display that I'm going to talk about in a minute. As you can see, it's under the display. Okay, so this is the TCA 6416A pin expander. Uh, it has uh, 16 uh, pins. So the data can travel over two lines, the I2C lines from the hosting MCU uh, to this board that will output the serial data in a parallel manner uh, to the parallel pins. And here in this board, I have every pin connected to a single LED uh, on this board that has an ugly uh, soldering, as you can see. See, my soldering skill is very bad. Uh, so I'm going actually to hide this uh, awful uh, view so actually, I'm going to hide this awful view uh, with this uh, 3D printed LED diffuser. So it has a better look, just like this. Okay. Okay, so to power the system, uh, I have here this ESP programmer that will provide 3.3 uh, volt uh, to my board uh, and see how everything will work together. Okay. Okay, so here I have my ESP32 already programmed uh, to interface uh, this display. As you can see, it has two digits, so it can count up to uh, 99. Of course, I can add more uh, animation uh, to the firmware. All right, so here I've changed the LED uh, diffuser. As you can see, the seven segment uh, display can now show more meaningful uh, indication of the uh, number it's showing. Uh, I've designed a new one so I will go with this design all right so here you can see the hardware that I'm using uh, here I have the ESP32 C2 the development board that I've designed uh, connected over I squared C lines the serial data and serial clock to the pin expander that I'm using and it has uh, 16 output pins uh, these pins can be used either input or outputs uh, but since I'm interfacing a display that contains uh, two digits of two seven segment display, uh, all the uh, pins will be configured as, as output and these LEDs will represent the display that I'm interfacing. All right, so now it's time to jump into firmware that's running on the ESP32C2 to see how everything uh, works together. All right, so here's the firmware that's running on the ESP32C2. Uh, so let's start with the main function where I have my I2C peripheral uh, is initialized as master. So here in the configuration, I'm selecting the data and the clock uh, pins of the MCU. And then I'm selecting whether these lines will have uh, pull up or not. Actually, here they are, they have. But of course, if your hardware has pull up resistors, so there's no need to enable this uh, configuration. And then I'm selecting the speed of the uh, data. And here it is uh, 100 kilohertz. There is one thing to mention here is that uh, the pin can be selected uh, from the idf.py menu config. We can do it uh, over here. So of course, in order to execute this command, you will be uh, in the directory of the project. 
So here we have uh, the menu config menu and the I squared C pins can be selected uh, from this window. As you can see, I have six and seven pins uh, are used for the I squared C. There's one more thing to mention here is that if you are like me and using ESP32 C2, you need to do the following configuration. Usually uh, the ESP32 uses uh, 40 megahertz crystal, but ESP32 C2 uses a different one. Uh, it should be actually uh, 26 megahertz. And you can actually find this uh, configuration in the hardware settings and then in the main crystal uh, configuration and here as you can see I'm using 26 megahertz if you use the other one you will have a problem with uh, timing in your MCU so this was something uh, that I needed to mention so okay then let's carry on with our firmware and let's get back to the main so after getting done with the I squared C peripheral initialization uh, the pins of the TCA6416A pin expander should be configured as output and this is the command that's done uh, to do so so if we go inside uh, this uh, I squared C write function we see that the uh, past uh, I squared C uh, device address is passed and it's going to be used in the uh, write function and we have the register address which is uh, 06 hex and actually the addresses of the registers uh, we can find them in the uh, data sheet of the uh, pin expander that we are using uh, so now currently I'm using uh, this uh, register configuration register in order to set all the pins as output so that's why I'm passing the value 0 uh, to the pin expander so I can set all its pins uh, as output because I'm interfacing the uh, LED display and uh, all and every single pin will be connected to a single LED so pin output is the correct configuration so here in the I squared C write command uh, we can see that the past uh, variables uh, are stored in this uh, write buffer so here I'm putting the uh, register address in order for the configuration and then the past data is split into two bytes uh, so I can send them uh, over I squared C bus. Actually, I have my logic analyzer connected to the I squared C bus in order to uh, analyze it. So here we have here the one frame of data sent. Uh, first of all, we have the I squared C uh, slave address, and then I have the configuration register address, and then the data that's going to be loaded to it. So I can set all the pins. Uh, of the pin expander to output all right so let's get back to our code uh, and in the main and in the main after configuring all the pins as output uh, i'm initializing this task that's going to run uh, four times uh, every one second over here in order to send data to the pin expander so i can change the value that's displaying uh, on the seven segment uh, display so inside this function, uh, what's going to be done is that uh, there's a counter uh, that's going to be incremented every time that this task uh, is going to run. And once it reaches uh, the uh, two digit limit, which is 99, it's going to go to zero again. So every 250 milliseconds, a new packet of data will be sent to the pin expander. Uh, and this data is going to be determined by the counter value. Uh, and, and actually here what this function is doing is uh, it's mapping the value uh, into a seven segment representation. So uh, the value can be displayed uh, on the seven segment display. So let's go into it and see how it's implemented. So here in this function, in the display number function, depending on the past value, I'm determining whether it's going to consist of one digit or two digits. Uh, and according to that, uh, the uh, segment mapping uh, is going to be done. And this is actually done using two uh, different uh, arrays stored in the flash. I have them over here. So here, depending on the past value to this array, the segment representation will get back uh, to the value assigned back to the value uh, over here so say that uh, number one is passed here uh, this will be returned so it will consist of uh, segment C and segment P and uh, the segment representation uh, is done over here this is will depend on the uh, hardware connection uh, of your board so this will depend on the uh, pin expander uh, to the LED connection so yes by doing that I can uh, map uh, my value uh, to seven segment representation just like that uh, and if we go back to the main uh, we see that uh, this function is uh, running uh, four times uh, a second uh, so if we have a look at the uh, i squared c uh, bus uh, data uh, here we can see the data uh, that's uh, running on the bus so as you can see uh, 
uh, every 250 milliseconds uh, a new packet of data is sent so if we zoom in to this uh, frame uh, here we have uh, 02 it's the right register to the uh, pin expander and then we have the data that's passed so this is actually nothing uh, but the seven segment representation of the past value all right so this brings me to the end of this tutorial uh, all the materials and the code uh, is shared on my github repository you can get it uh, from there and maybe modify it and develop it depending on your application so please if you have learned something new uh, from me in this tutorial don't forget to like this video share it among your friends and tell them about useful electronics See you in the upcoming tutorials and bye-bye.